Hi guys and welcome to The Secret Life of a Binge Eater. Now I thought for the first official episode, which would technically be um, episode two, I thought it'd be appropriate to start off with my story as a binge eater, how I was as a child, as I was a teen, and how it consumed me throughout college. Before I start, I made a couple of lists because y'all know I love making lists. And I made a list of a few things I think you should know about me before I say my story. And then uh, three categories that I put my binge eating into. So a few things I think you should know about me before I start my story is that I am the oldest child. As a kid I was a very anxious child. I had a lot of anxiety and I still do and you could really tell that between me and my sister. She was a more rambunctious little girl and I was more of the, oh my god, like... If only you knew who I was. <laughs> and then I did always struggle with depression um, as an early teen and an adult. And then I was always that like kid that always wanted to impress their parents. I wanted to be the one who did everything right, like the good grades, this. I always came in at 9 p.m. when I was in like sixth grade or something. I don't know. But those are just a couple things I think you should know about me. And then I was always thinking, and this is how I am because I like the process, I categorized my binging into three groups throughout my journey or my story. Um, I put it into self-infliction, uh, binge eating for enjoyment, and then binge eating emotionally, so emotional binge eating. So I'll just point those out throughout my story and then I'll just put pictures like up here or videos I find, if I find them. Uh, but I think maybe you'd understand like how I look. I don't know. Let's begin. My story. So as I was like a little, like as long as I can remember, my parents always worked. My dad was sick when I was a child, but when he wasn't in the hospital, he was always working and my mom was working. Um, so I was always sent off to my grandma's house as a kid and I always enjoyed those times. So when I stayed with my grandma, I would you know, also go to my grandpa's and he would always take us out to eat. He's just like a lovely Polish man and <laughs> And he was a very compassionate man, my grandpa, and he definitely loved food. Well, I think that's an understatement, but he liked to show his compassion also through, you know, taking us out to eat and just showing his love. So he'd always take us out to nice places, but also places we liked. So one of the places he took us was, of course, McDonald's. And my mom struggled with her weight too as an adult and as a young teen and so she was very sort of strict with us as kids obviously, um, would always put guidelines which is normal, you know, she'd of course be like kids meal if you get coke it's diet coke just cause she drank diet coke. So when we'd be in line at McDonald's my grandpa would look at us and be like okay kids we are gonna get the big kids meal today. And uh, we'd be like, okay. He'd be like, but you're gonna tell your mom you had the kids meal. Keep it a secret. Sh I remember before we'd go to the playground, he'd always almost like rehearse it with us. He'd be like, so what did you eat today, Veronica? I had a hamburger kids meal with a Diet Coke and things like that. And then, you know, of course we'd get ice cream and my grandpa would be like, did you guys have ice cream today? And we'd be like, no, we didn't. As an adult, looking back at these memories, that's when I realized maybe little slight pieces of like, qualities of being a binge eater is taught to me I guess you can say and not even that not taught but like sort of helped mold me I don't know so we grow up we keep living um like I said I was an anxious child and I didn't do well with people yelling people being forceful people you know just a lot of things and I lived in a household unfortunately where my parents argued a lot. And that gave me anxiety up the ass. Um, and then my grandma moved in with us. Oh, I love that because it was like a grandma all day, every day in fifth grade. And she lived with us. She always took care of us and she loved us. And she could eat whatever she want and still stay skinny. 
and she would have these like Werther candies. I don't know how to explain them. They're like little hard candies. And she would um, also have Milky Ways and have jars for them. And she'd always be like, oh, you can take one, Veronica. Or you can take one, Liz. Or you can take one to whoever. And you know, I'd take one. But then when she'd like let us have one whenever we want, I would also just take like three or four, two to four candies. And I would just take them without telling her I took four. I'd only say I took one. And then like I'd just take it with me to my room and eat it. And it's almost like I was thinking what other people don't know weren't, wouldn't hurt them. But I was really only hurting myself. And you know, I'd just hide those like candy wrappers like in my drawer, underneath my bed, crevices, behind the radiator, I don't know, it was really weird. And so that happened for a while. And then I remember there were times when we'd go to Mexico, cause my dad's from Mexico, and we'd go for like a month there in the summer. And I was always a self-conscious kid. And I was always slightly bigger than other kids. Um, you could see my weight fluctuate. I was never like obese, but you know, I was a little chubby. My mom was always strict with me on that. And as a kid, I really just brushed it off. Um, but it really affected me when other people pointed it out. And I remember in fifth grade, going to Mexico for a month, and my sister didn't go that time. It was just me and my dad. And this really affected me. One of my tias, well, practically all of them, they were all selling this like a weight loss cream. And it was like a cream you'd put on your stomach and rub it there every day. Of course, this shit does not work. Well, I don't think so. But back in the day, they thought. Um, and I remember they looked at me and they're like, Marco, she's gained weight, which was like really like 10 pounds. But they made it feel to me that I was like this huge person, like me, like a 10, 11 year old. And I like all these people talking to me. They haven't seen me in like a year and they're like, she's gained weight. Oh, we can fix this. Just give give her this, please. Just give her, her this cream and tell her to do it. And I felt so embarrassed. I remember going to bed that night and like crying. I was so embarrassed and I was just upset. I, and I remember the next day I went out with Miss Primas and we went outside and they all went to like the little corner store and they have like chocolates, chicles and all that kind of thing. We would all buy them and you can get them for really cheap like Diaz and Tablos. It's like basically nothing. And like I remember I bought a bunch and I just shoved them in my little like purse bag thing and I just kept them to myself, didn't tell my dad I bought them and then like at night I ate them because I was too afraid to eat candy or any of that in front of my cousins. I didn't want to because anytime I did, people would stare at me and be like, why are you eating chocolate? Why are you eating ice cream? When clearly everyone else was eating ice cream, but because I was slightly chubbier, it was not all right. So that's what I did. Obviously, eventually I came back, only stayed for like a month. I remember in like seventh grade when I was 12, my grandpa died. And that like shook my whole world. Like, oh my God. Where I started depression slowly. It was never really noticed uh, by my parents. And I never really even noticed that I was depressed until later on. Um, but that really upset me. And I sort of saw myself like taking more of my grandma's chocolates or candies. And mind you, my weight kept switching back and forth, but my mindset of how I looked as a kid was like just fucked up.